But when King goes to Chicago, something interesting happens. You have, for the first time, a kind of nationally prominent civil rights celebrity who was casting a light on the problem of tenant organizing and the problem of profiteering in America's slums. Black newspapers, which are primarily family businesses around the country, and in many cases, families that own rental property themselves, begin having to write stories and you know, cataloging the episode that's in Chicago. And it begins to mobilize a kind of national tenant organizing movement in city after city after city in the Jim Crow South. And so the first active tenant organizing that you see in Miami begins after King's campaign in Chicago. SCLC activists, other kinds of black power organizations begin to have cracks in the authority of black landlords because they recognize that with King having problems in, in Chicago, they can then create a new kind of groundswell of enthusiasm about really having to organize tenants' rights. And it begins really with King's own initiative.